This is a serious occasion, sir. How are you so excited? Hi friends, welcome back to Disabled in Nature, where we talk about all things that are disabled in nature, and sometimes we might even go outside. My name is Marissa, I am disabled, I am a full-time power wheelchair user. If you've been here before, hi, welcome back. And if you're new, welcome, happy to have you. Today, I wanna to talk about how in the last few months of 2023, I had a bit of a health scare. I'll begin by saying that I'm fine. And if you know me in real life and I didn't tell you, please don't be offended. I promise if this story ended badly, I would have told you before I told the internet. There were a couple of months at the end of last year where I thought that I might have cancer. And I still might, but we'll get to that. So I wanted to make this video because there are so many stories about there about people, especially people with disabilities, having horrible experiences with the medical system. I've heard countless stories of people encountering just awful, demoralizing experiences when trying to access healthcare from inaccessible medical offices to medical gaslighting to outright being dismissed and not cared for. Like, go search for some stories. It's, it's wild. And I believe that those stories are all really important to tell. There are a lot of things that I think medical providers could learn from those stories as what not to do. But in a sea of what not to do, I wanted to talk about my experience that I had at the end of last year because it was a really positive one. And I think that the things that I have to share might be valuable to some medical professionals that might wonder, okay, here's all of these awful stories about what people have encountered. I know what not to do. You know, what should I do? Especially when encountering a patient with disabilities. Throughout my journey of the last few months of last year, finding out that I probably don't have cancer for now, I encountered so many wonderful medical professionals. They were kind and attentive and accommodating and warm and just really wonderful. So I wanted to tell you about them while also telling you about, you know, an experience that I had in the medical system as a wheelchair user. So go grab a snack or some tea or something and come on a journey with me to learn about how I found out that I probably don't have cancer and all of the wonderful medical professionals that helped me along the way. So what was wrong? What happened? Why did I think I might have cancer for a bit? Well, at the end of September, I noticed a lump on the back of my head. Turns out it was an enlarged lymph node. Throughout a couple of weeks, it started to spread down the system of lymph nodes on the left side of my neck. It started on the one on the back of my head, moved to behind my ear, and then these ones right here. I wasn't too worried about it. There are a lot of things that are not super bad that can cause your lymph nodes to enlarge. So I wasn't really worried about it until, you know, two weeks later when they were still there and I wasn't having any other symptoms. I was getting a little concerned. So I went to my primary care doctor. This is the first interaction in the medical system that I had that I really appreciate. My doctor came in and she listened to my concerns. She did a bit of an exam. She felt the nodes, she checked for other causes. We thought that it might be like an ear infection, although I wasn't having any fevers. Like I wasn't sick, guys, These they just, they came out of nowhere. And so she prescribed me some antibiotics and said, take these and we'll see what happens. But at the same time, she also put in an order for me at the local hospital to get an ultrasound of the area. In the event that nothing happens, I want you to have this order so that you can take steps to move this process forward for yourself. So I really appreciated how proactive she was and that she was not messing around. You see where this is going. I took the antibiotics and they didn't do anything. So I scheduled the ultrasound and I could do that because the order was all ready to go because my doctor was on top of it. So at this point I was getting a little bit worried. It seemed like this next step made things a little bit more serious, like something could actually be wrong. The morning that I went to the hospital to get the First ultrasound, I took some footage in my car. Okay, I hope I don't need to use this, but just in case that this is the start of a journey, I wanted to document how I'm feeling. It's Thursday, October 19th. It's like 10, 15 a.m. It's three weeks after I noticed them and they're still there and they're still swollen. So they're not painful and they're kind of hard and they're not moving and I don't have any other symptoms. So I'm getting a little worried uh, because those are bad things that signify the bad. Today, there's kind of two options. They're going to do an ultrasound. The lymph nodes are either going to look suspicious 
or they're not. And if they look suspicious, then I need a biopsy, which sounds really intense and I really want to do that. That also means that there's a higher, I feel like that means there's also a higher likelihood that it's, you know, bad. So over the past two weeks since my doctor's appointment, I've just been really worried about that because, you know, I'm trying to, you know, measure expectations and keep calm and try and think of, you know, even if it is bad, it might not be all that bad. My blood work came back all fine, except for like the inflammation markers, which when I looked it up, the internet was entirely unhelpful. It said it could be anywhere from an infection to cancer to chronic pain. I'm like, great. Thank you. So yeah, like I said, I'm hoping that I'm never gonna have to use this, but in the event that this doesn't go my way, I want some kind of record of it. Anyway, I thought this was gonna make me feel better and I don't know if it has, so I'm gonna just get my chair out and go in, go to the bathroom, get settled. I'm really, really early. Like I'm like 45 minutes early. I'm never this early to things. Yeah, I guess I'll update you when I get out or I won't. So I got out of my car, had an unpleasant interaction with a woman in the parking lot being very unintentionally condescending, which just made the day worse. I've been out of my car for three seconds, getting my chair out and some lady stops and asks if I need help. And I say, no, thank you. And she said, okay, well, you've got this all figured out then. Good for you. Here's your PSA to just not say anything. If you see a wheelchair user, just leave them alone. So I went into the hospital. I was in the waiting room and then they called me back and the ultrasound tech walked me back to the room where they do the ultrasound. It's just a small, dark, quiet room with the ultrasound machine and like a roll away hospital bed. The ultrasound tech asked if I could transfer from my wheelchair to the bed. This isn't unusual. I get asked this all the time in medical settings. And so I was like, yes, I can. So I did. And I laid down for the procedure. It was nothing too wild. It was like an ultrasound that they do if you're pregnant, only it was here <laughs> instead. The hardest part for me was rolling around on the bed. I have a really weak core. So rolling around on the bed while I was laying down in order to get my head and neck positioned in a way that she could get the correct ultrasound pictures was a little difficult for me, but nothing nothing too cumbersome. This is the only part of this journey where I encountered a healthcare professional that was not even bad, but just like, I felt like I was annoying her. I'll let past me tell it. I'm back. I know nothing. My hair is all goopy. I need to go take a shower. So it wasn't bad. It was an ultrasound tech. So she didn't give me any, like, she gave me nothing, honestly. She was pretty quiet. And when I like tried to ask questions, like when I was like, oh, how do you tell what is what? She just said years of practice. Cause it could have been a time to be like, oh, well like this is this tissue and that's bone and that's, this is the, the lymph node we're looking at and blah, blah, blah. And she said she was like on a really crazy swing shift schedule. So maybe that was it, or maybe I was annoying her or maybe she saw something bad. So as you can see from the clips, I was really nervous and I didn't know what was going on and I was just kind of searching for answers and a little bit of like warmth or interest from her would have gone a really long way for me, I think. It wasn't necessarily a bad experience. It was just not confidence building, I guess. I don't know and I won't know for until the radiologist takes a look at the images and she said that I should have those results within like a day or two. So I'm just going to be watching my portal for those. Hopefully they'll just be like, shit looks normal. They were so cute. They were just like little round black splotches. Yeah. So, I mean, I feel better now uh, having seen them. Maybe I'll do some ill-advised Googling when I get home after I take a shower Ew. Gross. Yeah, I'm gonna shut up and I'm gonna go home. Yeah, maybe I'll update you when I get those results. Maybe I won't. Maybe I'll delete this footage because it's nothing. It was not nothing. So the results of the ultrasound came back suspicious, but not too suspicious. So the lymph nodes had some malignant characteristics, but not all of them. And I wasn't experiencing any other systemic symptoms. So my healthcare team decided that we should wait four to six weeks and do a follow-up ultrasound and see if 
they have enlarged or changed in any way. In this like four to six week gap, I was really scared. I wasn't having a lot of communications from my healthcare team because there there wasn't really much to communicate about. It was just, these look a little funny. Let's wait and see what they look like in a month. And knowing that it could be cancer, I was really scared. I didn't really know what that meant for me. It was obviously not the result that I was hoping for and a medical situation of severity that I had not really encountered in the past. Contrary to most people's assumptions, when they see the wheelchair, people think that I've had a lot of experience with the medical system. That's not true for me. For me and my disability, uh, as far as doctors go, I've been relatively hands-off. I've had a lot of doctors when I come into their office for unrelated things, uh, unrelated to my muscular dystrophy or the wheelchair. And I've had them like assume bits of my medical history based on the fact that I'm in a wheelchair have assumed that, you know, maybe I've had a ton of surgeries. Like when I tell them I haven't had any surgeries, they're like, oh, really? Or they assume that I've experienced a lot of pain in my life, which now is true, but it not related to like surgeries or anything. And it wasn't always true. I would definitely caution against that if you're a medical professional by assuming what someone has experienced based on what mobility aids that they use. So in this time between scans, I kept living life, kind of, you know, carried on as normal, but all with the underlying notion in the back of my head that I might be carrying around something bad. Yeah, so we'll say that that was uncomfortable for me. But we'll fast forward to a month later when I had the follow-up ultrasound. This procedure functionally went exactly the same as the first one, except I asked if I could stay in my chair so that moving my head and neck around so that the ultrasound tech could get the correct images of my lymph nodes. And she was very kind, very lovely, very accommodating. And she moved the rolling hospital bed just out of the room. So I had plenty of room to move around in my wheelchair and get all set up, which I appreciated. The tech this time was really wonderful. And I filmed a clip for when I got back into my car after the appointment, talking about how great she was and how she really improved the experience for me this time. All right, I think it's been like four weeks since the last time I updated this. I'm at my four week update appointment. I just got out from the ultrasound. My neck is all sticky. She didn't really say anything. Um, this ultrasound tech was much nicer, much more gentle and attentive and kind. And like, I didn't feel like I was bothering her by being there. So that was nice. She was very warm and kind. She was a sweet lady. Whenever you have one bad medical experience and then you go back and you get one and you get someone that's like, that's like that, that's like calm and attentive and nice. It's always like, you don't realize how much that first experience affected you until you get the nice person. And it's like a sigh of relief. Like I want to, I want to cry. So yeah, medical professionals, you can really, uh, you can really turn someone's day around based on uh, how you treat them. So I know everyone has their bad days and I think I just caught that other tech on a bad day, but, uh, every little thing you do matters. I'm still worried it's something bad, but I was looking on the scan at these ones right here and from everything I've read, which I know I shouldn't read things on the internet because I'm not a doctor, but from everything I've read, they were shaped fine. So when you do the ultrasound, she was I was asking her questions. She was actually answering them for me this time. Um, unlike the other tech that like didn't answer any questions or ask me any questions or ask me if I had any questions. And I was asking her, you know, like, what are you seeing? What are you looking for? And she pointed out my carotid artery and then she turned on the color on the ultrasound and like my artery lit up and then there were and so i'm assuming that that means like it's vascularized it has blood in it obviously because it was my artery and then there were a couple little spots inside the middles of the lymph nodes and i was like are those supposed to be there because i've read that abnormal vascularization can be a sign of malignant lymph nodes i know i know i know okay you don't have to tell me and so I was like, oh, is that normal? And she was like, yeah, yeah, that's normal. Those are supposed to be there. And I was like, okay, good. So I'm just going to wait for the results of that. And hopefully it's, hopefully they're like, oh, they're fine. And then we just need to investigate the other causes of the swelling in my pain. But I have a feeling that's not going to be the outcome because that would mean that I got lucky. <laughs> I'm just going to guess at this point that a biopsy is in my future which is really scary, but 
worse things have happened. So I'm going to go home now and take a shower, get this gel out of my hair, and just wait for the radiologist's report on what the hell is going on. The second experience was much better. It really was a relief to me to have the tech that was warm and accommodating and answered all my questions. It really did turn that experience around for me. Something that I learned through this experience is that it's not like how you see it on TV where it's like this big build up to an appointment and then you have the test and then they take you into a room and the doctor tells you you have cancer or they don't. Like that's not the the process is kind of really drawn out. And you kind of go and you get the test and then you go home and then you either get your results like over an online portal or someone calls you. It's really not how it looks like in the movies. And that is definitely something that I learned. So I got the results of my second ultrasound through my online portal and then someone called me the next day to discuss next steps. I did get the results of the ultrasound back yesterday about three hours later. My lymph nodes are still suspicious. And so we're going in for a biopsy, like I expected. I have a referral to oncology for that, which is really scary. That doesn't mean that it is cancer. It just means that they're the people that do the biopsies, and that's the department where the um, histologists are that look at tissue samples and determine what is up. So um, I'm supposed to be getting a call today for them to tell me when that's going to be, date and time, so I don't have to call the schedule at this time. They're scheduling it for me. I spent a lot of time crying yesterday. This is just getting worse and worse and a little bit more overwhelming as time goes on. Yeah, my head hurts again today. Oh, hi, buddy. Hey, hello. He's a good boy. Oh, okay. What do you want? You're so weird. Yeah, so I'm a little bit overwhelmed, but just trying to take it one step at a time. Trying not to get ahead of myself because it might be nothing. It might be something else entirely that I've never even thought about. This doesn't have to end badly. It might, but I have no way of knowing that. So we're just going to take it one step at a time. And uh, I guess my next update will be on biopsy day. So this impending biopsy was by far the scariest part, but it's also when a ton of support from the system kicked in. I had several people that my hospital system calls nurse navigators contact me, walk me through the procedure, take my medical history, make sure that I had all of my questions answered. Shout out to these ladies because they handled me with patience and kindness. I was very, very nervous. My anticipatory and medical anxiety was really kicking in there for a while. And they were so patient with me, answered all of my questions, and I had a lot of them. This support from the system, like outside of appointments, some a number that I could call, a person I could message on my online portal, really helped manage my anxiety through this process. And I cannot overstate enough how much this kind of support helped me. So biopsy day was the week after Thanksgiving. So we're into late November. This process started in like late September. So it'd been a couple of months. I don't have any footage from beforehand on biopsy day because my husband came with me. He took the morning off of work so he could drive me so I didn't have to get my travel chair in and out of my car. Seriously, I need this van for my independence, for me, okay? And he came with me so I didn't have to be alone because it was was kind of scary. The biopsy itself was a wild experience and I will let past me tell it because she tells it best. Okay. Hi. It's November 30th and I got back from my biopsy about an hour ago. I had to jump right into a work meeting so that was fun but um we can see where I had it done and my skin has turned this peachy color from the antiseptic that they used. I'm not gonna lie to you it was horrible. It was terrible. I hated it. I don't want to do it again. So what they did is Aaron and I went to the hospital and we checked in and we waited in a waiting room and then they came for me and we went back to the uh, the center, I guess. And there were a bunch of these like bays all around, which were just like little rooms covered by a curtain. And 
I went into one and they, I got up onto a hospital bed and like a gurney, one that rolls. And she took the, my intake nurse took my vitals and Aaron was allowed to come back with me, which was nice. So he was hanging out in the bay. And then after a little bit, this guy, uh, another nurse, I'm assuming came, uh, he was very chipper. Uh, he came to get me. And so Aaron had to stay in the bay and he rolled me in the hospital bed in the gurney. We made it to the biopsy room waiting for us. And there was another nurse. I didn't catch her name. And the doctor, Dave, uh, physician's assistant, actually, I think he was. He was also very chipper, very interesting personalities I encountered today. He walked me through what the procedure would be like. And I signed some consent forms. And then I laid down and they, you know, put the gel on my neck. It was cold this time, which was a little jarring, I guess. And then they, they set the screen so that while I was laying, I could actually like see it. It was like at my face level this time. So like that was nice. So I was looking in at the lymph nodes and I was supposed to go in for a core biopsy, but they said that the lymph nodes were too small. So I had to do a fine needle aspiration at biopsy. And fun fact, I don't know if you know this, in a core biopsy, they like take a little like core of the tissue with with a needle from the node. Um, but because mine were too small to do that, they had to do the, the FNA. So a fine needle aspiration biopsy is where they... So they numbed me up with lidocaine first, which those shots hurt and burned a little bit, I guess, but it was fine. But to do the actual biopsy, what they did was they used the ultrasound to guide it to see the lymph node. And you could see the needle on the screen, too. After the lidocaine numbed me, I couldn't feel any any of the needle going in. But they couldn't numb the lymph nodes themselves. What happens is it needs to go into the lymph node. And then they were, like, taking pictures and video on the ultrasound machine. And then they have to go in and out a bunch. So it's like... Me, in my mental vision, I'm just picturing, like, this needle in there just ripping apart my lymph node. And it hurt quite a bit. I'm not going to lie, it hurt quite a bit. It was like a, and I can still, like, feel it. My neck is so, so swollen. He had to do it four times. Mm -hmm. It hurts to yawn. I'm going to try to not. So he went in the first one and did the, you know, the... Pokey, 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 pokey. He wasn't coming in and out of the skin each time, so he put the needle in and then kind of... It was awful. It was horrible because I knew it was happening, and if I wanted to, I could look at the screen and see it. Uh, no way I was doing that. <laughs> there was no way. I was closing my eyes. I was breathing deeply. The first two pokes weren't so bad, and then he moved onto another node, and the third... The third round of pokes and of jiggles was so painful. I was like sweating. It was like a deep pain, like a, not like a sharp, but like a deep, like the beginning of a really, really bad cramp, like a tongue cramp. If you ever had a tongue cramp, it felt like that. It was terrible. And then along with the sensation of the, of the jabbing, it was horrible. After he was done with the third one, I was like, I need a break. <laughs> I need a break for a second. And so I took like a 30 second break and I just like breathed, breathed deeply. And, you know, they were talking and they were all, they were all wonderful people. That's something that I, I will have to say that everyone I've encountered during the process of trying to figure this out has been absolutely wonderful. And so they were giving me a second. <laughs> they were giving me a moment of grace and mercy. I, I, they were like, there's just one more. I was like, okay. So I leaned back over and they're like, are you ready? And I was like, no. <laughs> but do it anyway. So he did it. And the last one really wasn't so bad, but that third one, boy, my hands hurt from squeezing each other. <laughs> it was awful. So after that, after he was done with that, they, you know, they packaged the samples in the little bottles with their little preservatives in them or whatever. Pushing in the back of my ear feels good. Yeah. I really don't recommend doing that. It was pretty bad, but it was very fast when I was done and they rolled me back to the bay to go back to Aaron. Oh, they brought me some ice. I should probably put on there. So when I got back to the bay, uh, Aaron was like, oh wow, that was really fast. So I was only gone from him for like 15 minutes. I'd say that the biopsy itself probably took like five minutes and total needle time in was probably like 60 seconds. So like 15 seconds a piece. 
It's probably less than that. But, you know, when you're in pain and you just want it to be over, it always feels longer. Yeah. So that was my experience. Yeah, I don't recommend this, but if you got to do it, you got to do it. They said I should get results back within like three to five business days. So now we just have to wait and hopefully those are fine. And this just turns into a uh, my biopsy experience. Uh, that time that I found out there was nothing wrong with my lymph nodes. Hopefully that's what this video is called. Now we wait. I will reiterate that everyone I encountered on this day was amazing, attentive, kind, warm. I mentioned the nurse who came to get me and the doctor and how chipper they were. They really were. Like, I don't know. I wasn't really vibing with it at, in the beginning because I was like, this is a serious occasion, sir. How are you so excited? But as I got back into the procedure room uh, and things started to get like, we're doing this now, I definitely did appreciate the levity and them keeping it light. You know, they took their job seriously, but they didn't take the moment too seriously. Does that make sense? I use humor as a coping strategy a lot, so I really appreciated their humor in this situation. As I was being rolled out of the operation room, I was like, thanks for stabbing me, which uh, is something I say a lot, like when I go to get shots and things, I tell the, the doctor, the nurse who's done it, you know, thanks for stabbing me today. And they always think that's funny kind of lightens the mood a little bit. So these people took their job seriously without being serious people, if that makes sense. And they kept it as fun as they could in that room with uh, this young woman who was clearly panicking a little bit. They did so many things right. And they did so many things that I appreciated. They talked through everything as they did it. There was nothing that they did that I didn't know that they were about to be doing. I could have watched the screen if I wanted to, although I didn't because I felt comfortable voicing that I needed a break from the pain for a minute. And like I said, they showed me grace and mercy and they gave me that break. I did end up feeling very comfortable with them. And I think, you know, when you have patients that you're doing something invasive to that hurts, that is to diagnose whether or not they have cancer, that's a pretty serious situation. And I think if you can make someone feel comfortable in that scenario, like, you're doing your job right. Bravo. Good job, Dave. I think that they know that the people coming to them are probably having one of the worst days of their lives and are scared of having a painful procedure and waiting for potentially life-changing news. I know that I was feeling all kinds of vulnerable that day and they made it suck much less. So I'm a bad YouTuber and I don't have any more footage for the rest of this story. So I'll just tell you what happened. The results of the biopsy came back negative. Yay! However, the ultrasound still showed those malignant characteristics of my lymph nodes. So I guess that biopsies aren't always 100% correct. Like they can miss the cancerous tissue in the little jabby jabs. They won't pick it up. And so the oncologist that was assigned to my case, who I had not yet met, said that she wanted a whole one to like dissect and look at. So that meant surgery. And like I said earlier, believe it or not, I've never had surgery before. And due to my FSHD, the kind of muscular dystrophy that I have, I've been told my whole life that it is dangerous for me to go under general anesthesia. So I've made it 27 years, knock on wood, without having to undergo general anesthesia. Uh, so I was not thrilled about this next step, but I was happy that they didn't just take those results as, oh, cool, you're good when that might not necessarily be the case. So we went in for a surgery consult and the surgeon decided he wanted to take the lymph node on the back of my head. And did you even know you had lymph nodes back there? Cause like I didn't. He wanted to take the one on the back of my head because it would be the, the one under my scalp because it would be the easiest one to get to without like being near any major arteries or facial nerves or stuff like that. I was just gonna go ahead with the surgery, um, but luckily I brought my husband along and having the foresight that he very often does, he said that we should talk to the oncologist first to get a fuller picture of what all of the tests I've had done and all the results mean as far as getting the surgery to take a whole one as a precaution, just because going under anesthesia is a little bit extra dangerous for me. He's always looking ahead. So I'd already had an appointment with the oncologist that was assigned to my case for later that week, so we kept it. And that appointment 
besides the offhanded comment from the intake nurse that I handle that thing really well, that thing being my wheelchair, um, this appointment was the best one of all. And this, by the way, is not even close to the first time a medical professional has said this to me about my wheelchair. <laughs> and it's very off-putting. So my advice to anyone, but like especially medical professionals, is that unless I'm there specifically for something that relates to my muscular dystrophy or my wheelchair, I don't need you to mention it. It doesn't, it does, you don't, it doesn't need to be brought up. It's really, really, really weird when people say things like this. And like, I don't know what to say back to you. It's just awkward. Anyway, back to the visit. So this visit was scheduled at the oncology office at 4.30 p.m. on a Friday. And this appointment was so wonderful because of how much time and care and attention the doctor gave us especially because it was 4.30 p.m. on a Friday. So she came in and she answered all of our questions. She looked up all of my test results, went through them with us, talked about everything in a lot of detail, listened to the concerns that I had about the surgery. She like felt around my neck and like surrounding areas for lymph nodes and stuff. And based on her professional opinion, she was comfortable at this point just monitoring especially given the concerns that I had about the surgery. She said that she wasn't seeing a bunch of red flags about cancer for her and that she was comfortable monitoring it and that, you know, even if it is cancer, it's not going to be anything aggressive. So we can hold off on, like, aggressive measures to figure it out. Did you know that there are cancers that don't need treatment? She said that she'd had a patient with a certain kind of cancer for the past 10 years that they've just been monitoring and she's never needed treatment. I didn't know that. Anyways, so to wrap up, we decided to forego surgery and just monitor for now. I have been instructed to call if I have any other sy systemic symptoms of cancer like fever, night sweats, rapid weight loss, stuff like that, or if the nodes get any bigger. I'm gonna be scheduled for a CT scan in a couple of months to just like double check, see what's going on, but no surgery for now. Yay! So at this time, I probably don't have cancer. And at this time, that is good enough for me. I know this is a long one, but if you made it this far, thank you so much for watching. As I wrap up, I would like to thank and shout out all the wonderful medical professionals that I encountered throughout this journey. It really made all of the difference for me. There are really so many horrible accounts of disabled people encountering bad medical professionals in the system, not being taken seriously, not having their concerns heard or their questions answered. And that wasn't the case for me. And I'm really, really, really grateful. Now the only complaint that I have are the hundreds of dollars of medical bills that I have because healthcare in America. Thanks for watching. I hope you learned something. If you're a medical professional, I'd love to hear in the comments down below what you thought of my experience. And if you're someone who's encountered bad medical professionals, especially if you're someone with a disability, I hope that this serves as proof that there are good ones out there. Don't stop looking for them and don't accept subpar care. You deserve to be respected and feel cared for and looked after, especially if you're going through something as vulnerable as finding out whether or not you have cancer. That's it for this one, friends. Until next time, be kind, leave your good doctors good online reviews so that other people can find them. Don't forget to get outside and I will see you in the next one. Bye.